Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Thank you so much for joining us. We have the top headlines where you live. I'm Tiffany Lee. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around our area. A bill filed in the Arkansas legislature would prohibit cities and local governments from banning animals based on their breed. House Bill 1519 would amend the law to add an additional section that would specifically prohibit city governments in Arkansas from regulating animals based on the breed or perceived breed of the animal. The bill was first filed on Tuesday and was referred to the city, county and local affairs committee. According to our media partners at Arkansas Business, the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled in favor of Arkansas and other states in a dispute over unclaimed checks from a money transfer company. About $250 million in unclaimed checks that MoneyGram International had turned over to Delaware will now be returned to the states in which they were purchased. The plaintiff's argument centered on the Federal Disposition Act states that proceeds on unclaimed money orders, traveler's checks, and similar items must be turned over to the state where an item was purchased. The Arkansas Attorney General's office has said that the state's portion of the money is about $650,000. And now let's get a check of your weather with meteorologist Zach Scott. Hey, Tiffany, the rain is pushing out of here. We need it to uh, get out of here and we need to dry out for a couple of days. Looks like we're going to do that because we picked up a lot of rainfall and we were already doing great on the rainfall, not only this year, but just going back over the last three months or so, the last four months, we've done well. It's been active enough. We've had enough precipitation. There's a lot of moisture in the ground, so pretty much we're getting a lot of runoff. There's nowhere for this rain to go. I think rivers and streams are going to be swollen going into the weekend. Showers are pretty much out of here by lunch. Lunchtime, 10% chance of a stray sprinkle out there. But outside of that, again, we're already dry by late morning, early afternoon. Clouds are likely going to stick around some. Some breaks of sunshine. We try to get some late day clearing. Eastern Oklahoma, parts of the Washtals River Valley, our eastern zones, Huntsville to Clarksville, you're likely going to stay locked in the clouds all day long. And that's going to keep us a little cool. We are tracking some cooler temperatures coming in from the north. So temperatures are going to top out in the upper 40s to lower 50s across the area. Again, a high chance of early morning showers. We're dry, mostly cloudy, breezy, and cool late morning through the afternoon. We'll continue to cool off. 30s overnight, some patchy, dense fog. We'll try to develop overnight into spots into early Saturday morning. Then the weekend's looking fantastic. Tiffany, not a bad one here. 60s and 70s, light winds Saturday. Plenty of sunshine all weekend long. A little breezy Sunday with gusts 20 to 25 miles per hour in the River Valley, 30 to 40 in northwest Arkansas. All right, thanks for that, Zach. Now let's get you caught up on some stories that you might have missed this week. Fort Smith Mayor George McGill, he gave his State of the City address and shared why he believes that a jet fighter training center could come to the 188th wing of the Arkansas Air National Guard. The mayor's address also focused on the accomplishments from the past year and the city's plans for this year. 5 News reporter Micah Wilson has more. State of Fort Smith is good, very good. Mayor McGill says job growth is expanding in the city. Fort Smith is a growing region. Pointing at the future home of a foreign military training center at the 188th, Arkansas Colleges of Health Education and Development at Chaffee Crossing. Over 3,500 new jobs have been created just by that development alone right here in Fort Smith, Arkansas. In order to keep attracting people to Fort Smith, we must promote Fort Smith as a good place to live. Making sure to prioritize the quality of life in the city. Primarily, we're working on providing more parks, more trails, uh, more activities at Parrot Island. The city is also hoping to attract tourists by announcing the U.S. Marshall's Museum will open this year. Our goal is to open on the 4th of July. I hope Doug is listening, Doug Babb, who runs it. We will have one celebration. Something the city's been working on since 2007, the mayor also brought up the flooding of 2019. And I went down to the Arkansas River and it looked like a mountain. The river was so high and it devastated our city. He says now the city is getting a FEMA reimbursement of about ten and a half million dollars. It's taken four long years to get there. So that money is going back into water and sewer activities to improve our infrastructure. Regarding the Foreign Military Training Center at the 188th, Mayor McGill says an official announcement should come in the next month. The mayor also talked about the city's crime rate dropping by 10% in the last year. An executive order is designed to streamline and improve the adoption process by creating private partnerships with the state.
Five News spoke with those who are passionate about kids in the foster care system. Today there are 292 kids in every corner of our state whose parental rights have been terminated and they are in need of a forever family and a chance at a bright future. The order creates Every Child Arkansas, a network of state agencies tasked with finding ways to recruit more foster care parents. And founder Christy Irwin says that is Project Zero's ultimate goal. Hopefully with this executive order, it's going to stimulate people to say, what can I do? And whether that's to foster yourself or to adopt or to get behind someone that is, to volunteer with one of the organizations, I, I just, I really do think that co coming from the head of our state, uh, it makes, it makes a big difference. According to the governor, it will also connect families with social services and create preventative strategies to keep children out of foster care. And what I would like to see come out of this and what I'm encouraged by is the continued education and partnership of our community around trauma-centered practices. The Northwest Arkansas Children's Shelter has been practicing trauma-centered care for the last 30 years. The shelter has Hope Academy, a public charter school, and the only trauma-centered practice practice in the state. And that trauma affects that child. That child carries that trauma with them throughout their life. And so if we're able to help them from an education standpoint, ensure they have a high quality education that takes their trauma into account and sets them up for success in life, it's an incredibly exciting. That was Rachel Williams reporting. The initiative will also allow certain persons to be deputized as a foster advocate to help foster families in each county. This morning, there's a new discovery at War Eagle Cavern, and it's one that could date back more than 130 years. 5 News reporter Jose Carranza takes us through the cavern and how workers came across this historic discovery. I'm here at the Blackburn Homestead, where the general manager of the cavern tells me the only thing connecting their mill and the cavern is the War Eagle name. That's until now with the Blackburn carving. One of the things we're known for is we have a very large natural entranceway. It's over three stories tall, so it wouldn't have exactly made the cave difficult to find for any explorers in this region. The War Eagle Cavern is a well-known cavern in northwest Arkansas with a large entryway directly on Beaver Lake. The attraction offers a cavern tour, gemstone panning, a maze, or for those a little adventurous, a headlamp-guided spelunking tour. We'd have to kind of traverse through the cavern down below in the uh, waterway. And because we were down, way down there, uh, nobody ever really saw or noticed any of the uh, features that are up high over here. But as the owners decided to expand the traditional cavern tour further in with walkways, workers came across signatures and saw a well-known War Eagle name, Blackburn. You have the uh, two letters right here, which are his first two initials. That's a Z and a J. And then the Blackburn name starts right here. The Blackburns, you know, they started the War Eagle Mill, um, but, you know, they were in this cave, too. And they were probably some of the first white settlers in the area to come down here, but, mm -hmm. um, besides the Native Americans. Sylvanus Blackburn was the founder of the Grist Mill, which saw a lot of use during the Civil War. But it turns out the initials aren't of Sylvanus, but match those of his son, Zimri Jackson Blackburn. Not only do the initials match, and the last name obviously matches. This is the only signature that is written in cursive that we've found in the entire cave. The discovery offers a new possible connection between the two Northwest Arkansas staples through the Blackburn name. A lot of people assume that because we have the same name, all those two places are related. And we always used to say, yeah, we're not actually. But now there's proof that was put there probably 150 years ago. It says, yeah, actually we are. Um, that family over there that started this, they ended up exploring down here too. Now, if you'd like to see this new discovery for yourself, you don't have to wait long. The War Eagle Cavern is set to open up this Saturday, March 4th. In Rogers, covering news where we live, Jose Carranza, 5 News. They give tours every 20 to 30 minutes throughout the day. For details on tickets and more, you can visit the 5 News app and website. Those are some of your top headlines that you might have missed this week. We'll continue to follow the news all day. Catch up with us again this evening on your 5 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10. I'm Tiffany Lee. Have a great day.